there is one key element throughout the entirety of the chapter that is extremely important, and that is perspective. What's great about perspective is that you get emotion wrapped with it, and people's own selfish desires, their wants, their needs, but also their general observation of certain situations and outcomes. Obviously, we have one of the biggest situations happening at the moment, with Eren activating all of the titans within the wall, pulling people into Ymir's place, the knowledge that Eren is going to obliterate humanity on Earth other than Paradise and the Eldian people has gone outside of Paradise in itself. The knowledge of it is now located within every single Eldian across the globe, wherever they may be. And it's obviously made them scared because they know Eren's perspective. They know what he wants to do. And when you think of something of global scale like that, it's going to obviously be threatening. This information in itself, this reaction, this emotion from finding out this information leaks into the foreign countries. So there is going to be a fraction of resistance, if you could even call it that, against Eren and his plans at the moment. But people and different nations across the globe will soon catch on with what is going on. Whether they're completely across the globe, wherever there is an Eldian person, their reaction is going to leak and form information and context for the rest of the people. This is extremely important to set up as the quote-unquote resistance or the eyes on Eren are starting to turn onto him. Because at the moment, the only people that realistically have their eyes on Eren are the people that are obviously surrounding him, the people within Paradise. However, Mali will soon follow suit and then the rest of the world. Everyone is going to have their eyes on Eren and either see his plan follow through or, on the other hand, see him fall to his demise. Eren playing such a pivotal and global threat to the rest of the world, but even his own people, Eren is playing a much bigger role here. Not to say that his potential fall and his demise from his own people could warrant some sort of peace or some sort of agreement, some sort of treaty with all other nations paying attention to Eren and watching his own people take him out. It's not to say that that action of taking him out could cause that potential possibility of a treaty or warrant good faith, but it is a stepping stone in potentially a different direction, a direction that is unknown to us and the future of Eldian specifically. I still hold the belief that Eren destroying the entirety of the earth is detrimental to his own people. His emotion and somewhat of his actions are justifiable, but the mass genocide is completely stretched out. His emotion behind it, his feeling, everything is for his people. To stop this hatred, this cycle of tragedy, this endless segregation of his own people, he wants it gone. And the limits that he has been pushed to make him have no other opportunities. There is no other way for this to work out the way he wants it to. He wants this hatred to be gone, not for himself, but for his people. However, there is options that are completely unknown to Eren that are slowly starting to bubble, and this is where perspective starts to play a massive key in formulating a potential response to Eren's actions, whether that be a new formed resistance, whether that be a new form of defense, or even a different outcome other than obliterating humanity on Earth as we know it. Like I said before, with perspective comes emotion. One of the central focuses of this chapter is Gabby, and I've always personally enjoyed Gabby. I think she's a, an incredibly great character that shows the other perspective of children from Mali. Someone that has been raised and manipulated to become a child warrior, to hate devils, to then being thrown into paradise, being thrown into a family of Eldian people, and really pulling her out of the comfort. You've seen her trials and tribulation in itself. You've seen her grow, you've seen her understand people, you've seen her mature way past her age, per se break out of those shackles that Marley created for her. Those shackles of hatred, those shackles of racism, and she herself is slowly starting to understand things more and more. The utmost beautiful paralleling for her character with not only Eren but Sasha is incredible. She manages to escape with Reiner. Reiner feeds her a bit of information, some very important information regarding the hardening ability on his Titan. When Eren activated the rumbling, the hardening of his Titan fell off, which also means that Annie has awakened and we do get to see her fallen out of her crystal at the end of the chapter. This is going to be extremely important for what's to come, but also there's another piece of information a little bit later where it kind of leads into a potential idea that could go into taking Eren down or at least slowing his process to make 
can figure out a different method, a method of potentially connecting with Aaron, a method to communicate with him or persuade him or slow him down or something along those lines. But Reiner pretty much knocks out. He's extremely exhausted. He's been through a lot. He's taken a, an abundance of injuries. Falco, who is now in possession of the Jaw Titan, has actually been kidnapped by Connie. And I think this situation is building up into something extremely interesting for Gabby, as Connie is taking Falco back to his mother, who is a Titan, to feed Falco to her so she can ultimately transform back into human. This is where perspective and selfish desires come into play, and this is what Eren is causing among his people. Everyone is so tremendously all over the place that they want their own self-beliefs and their own self-desires to come out on top now. That's how much this situation, and obviously the end of the earth as you know it, has heightened people's anxiety, heightened people's self-preservation, and heightened people's stress, and completely thrown them for a loop. Even through all of this, Gabby's response is to finding Falco. That's what she wants. She knows that Falco is in possession of the Jaw Titan. She then goes to find out, thanks to Armin and everyone else, that Connie was the one to take him. Even though she pleads for it, you see her desperation, you see her try to make justifications, you see her try to create all these different ideas and theories that Eren could potentially do something with his power, with his abilities, brings all of these new ideas to both Armin and Mikasa as well. But you see her emotion how desperate she truly is and this is her selfish desire she wants to save Falco what I loved about Gabby was when she was amping herself up to go out and the parallels that I mentioned before you see her slick her hair back and look in the mirror pretty much identically to what Aaron was when he went through his mental hurdles and his metamorphosis when he made his decision but then right after that you realize she shares a very strong resemblance to Sasha and obviously Sasha and Gabby's situation and why Gabby is very much so hated throughout the community is because he killed Sasha. So the fact that there is symbolism there, the fact that they've paralleled that so beautifully and they've depicted her in the shape of Aaron looking into the mirror and tying his hair back, I thought was incredibly well done. And she's getting a lot more spotlight. And I think, like I said a very long time ago, she's going to play a massive role in not only persuading a lot of people potentially across the globe, but taking down Aaron specifically with the help of other people. Throughout all of this, she's grown up quite a bit and this new self-confidence goes straight into saving the family that took her in the family that she was so worried about and even treated her poorly at least in terms of her siblings that didn't really trust her because obviously she was not from there she kills a titan that was killing her sister and has this nice reunion with her family and I think that was a nice touching moment for her because of that situation they go on to talk about everyone has devils inside of them that everyone is their own devil basically and I thought that in itself that concept and her understanding that and then looking at Aaron, looking at everyone else, this is the reality for it. That devils can be created constantly by other people and that being devilish or being a devil in itself is inside every single person. Their own desires, their own emotions, their own ideologies is what forms into that. We jump back and forth between a lot of people, Arm and Mikasa, Yelena. We've seen Commander Pixies finally go down swinging, which is kind of nice to see him get an ending point for his character. He's been in here for a very long time, so I thought it was nice for Armin and everyone else to put him out of his misery because he was turned into a titan. But the biggest and most interesting thing about this entirety of a situation is that Eren doesn't necessarily have control over the more smaller titans, the random titans that are roaming around. He only seemingly has control over the wall titans, which is obviously a pretty big thing. If that was the payoff for it, it's 100% worth it. If he had to let go and couldn't control every single titan, Titan, but he could control the wall titans obviously you'd want to do it but it shows that there is some sort of a loophole here is that if he cannot control titans the most ironic thing that could potentially happen is Eren being killed by titans and i'm going to lead this into an idea when it comes to annie and her titan specifically armin starts to learn a lot of this information throughout the chapter you see him trying to think of different outcomes different concepts and different scenarios that could work against Eren. obviously he is going extremely too far even gabby herself pointed out that destroying humanity on earth is going extremely too far but what was more impressive is that she pointed out the military strongholds to put simply she herself said that why couldn't he just destroy the military on every single nation on earth wouldn't that be enough and in reality she is right but it doesn't necessarily stop the racism it doesn't stop the hatred and how different nations across the globe on top of Mali despise Eldians to the core there's so much hatred built up for them and that's never going to disappear and that's what running through Aaron's mind. 
other people aren't necessarily going to understand the full value of this other than Aaron. I think they can get a glimpse of his understanding, but his warrant, his ideology, his emotion, and everything that he wants to do playing this role that he is now playing this global threat, he's willing to sacrifice it all for his own people, and that has never been done before. No one has ever thought about doing this on such a global scale, as it almost seems impossible, but when the situation does arise, when it comes to be a possibility, everyone is scared. Even the Eldians don't want this to happen, or if they do, they're very conflicted by it. They may want it to happen because it's happening for them, he wants to save us, but is it the right thing to do? And this is the beauty of perspective, because so many people think differently towards this situation and towards Aaron. They may disagree with what he's doing, but then in reality, they realize that he's doing it for them, so they can survive. But then they feel bad about it, they don't want it to happen. Humanity's savior is starting to shine ever so brighter. Armin is starting to get a bunch of information that is going to most likely help with either taking down Aaron, persuading him, or anything along those lines. He got that piece of information with Reiner and his hardening actually breaking off his body. He got a good amount of perspective and emotion from Gabby. But then he also realized that Annie is now out of her crystal, and that's how we end off the chapter, with her sprawled out on the floor. And she holds a lot of mystery. A lot of us, for the longest of time, have been waiting for it. Where is Annie? What is she doing? Is she going to come back into the story? Did Isayama forget about her? But I think time and time again, Isayama has shown us that everything is put into motion for a reason and that he knows what he's doing and that we should have faith in him. And of course, there's times when we question that. Annie was one of those times and it has been for an extremely long time, but connecting all the dots, the hardening falling off Reiner's Titan, Aaron not being out of control normal Titans, and Annie coming out of the crystal leads me to a somewhat loose outcome, or at least what Armin may be thinking, or what he may connect the dots to. I think there's a lot of mysteries that will be explored regarding Annie. Was she herself drawn into the place where Aaron and everyone else was? Or was she disconnected from it because of the crystal that surrounded her? That's a question I've been thinking about since the previous chapter. There's a thing that Annie's Titan can do which may lead to some sort of distraction to say the least. Her Titan can actually call in other Titans. It's very similar to the, the scream that can control other titans that Zeke and Aaron both possess. However, her scream is a little different. I'm pretty sure every time we've seen her scream and the titans have come forming in around her titan, they've actually eaten her titan, and she actually uses it as a distraction or an escaping method. It's more so a self-destruct scream. She screams, all these titans come running in and eat her body. This could be a stepping stone into confronting Aaron. If she can scream loud enough, and she is potentially the only person that can do that at the moment, or that at least once to do that. She could connect herself to Eren, scream, call in all of these titans, and then you have a different situation there. A bit of time where Eren may have to deal with all the titans surrounding him and eating at his legs. Yes, he could just call in a wall titan to obliterate them, but that is an opening. And with whatever Armin is thinking, in terms of all the information that he's currently getting, this is a possibility that can be used. It's an interesting one, but there's definitely more there for her. Extremely excited to see where Isayama takes her. What information, what knowledge, does she know while she's been in the crystal? What newfound things are going to come from that? How is Armin going to connect all of these dots and put a plan in motion? This chapter was incredibly tragic, but beautiful at the exact same time. The amount of emotional response that differs between every single person, their reaction towards Aaron, their reaction towards the event and these Titans, they don't know how to feel. Even though they find out that this is for them, Eldians to survive, their fear, their reception is uneasy. They don't know how to feel towards this, and I think showcasing this from so many different angles just makes you ever so more confused on who you really want to support. And I love how Isayama is going down this route. As much as Eren is our main character, Isayama is pushing more and more into the idea of, yes, Eren is doing this out of emotion that is justified, but this action, this global threat, this annihilation, look at how his own people view him. Isayama wants you to start feeling conflicted because his own people, his closest friends are conflicted. It's a difficult thing to do very well, but he's going an extremely great way about it, showing so many different people's emotions and reactions. I think Gabby's showcase in this chapter was absolutely phenomenal, and it gave so much more insight for her and the importance that she could potentially play. Reiner is out for the count at the moment. Armin and Mikasa are thriving and trying to figure out a plan. Annie is out of this crystal now. Every other Titan that aren't wall Titans aren't listening to Aaron. Zeke is somewhere else entirely, and then who knows? where Levi is at this point. There is a lot of people here that can do a lot of damage
damage to Eren, even with these Wall Titan. Eren's biggest weakness is his own friends, as I don't think he would kill his own friends willingly. If it's Armin, if it's Mikasa, I don't think he can do it. That gives them the perfect opportunity to try and persuade him, to try and kill him, to do whatever they need to do to stop him. And that's what we're building towards right now. This chapter was emotional context, and it was extremely needed and beautifully done. So with that being said, that is basically it. Let me know how you felt about the chapter. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. But I'm actually going to end the video off here. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.